So uh, that's the mentality of our defense. None of our defensive players are scared or take a second seat or they're intimidated by the fact that we're playing a defending national champions. Uh, we take it as a challenge. And uh, we, at the University of Louisville, that's what we do, period. We prove them wrong every time. So we definitely want to uh, continue to just have that mindset of, you know, be underdogs and continue to work so we can get back to how Louisville used to be in defense. If somebody came in on the first day of camp and watched the defense, and they watched them yesterday, yeah. would they see a difference? Huge difference. Uh, what, is, what would it be? Getting to the football. Uh, yesterday is a prime example. Um, we scrimmaged. Um, if not every play, we were we were all 11 hats to the football. Mm -hmm. And that's been something that we kind of lacked in, in the past couple years. Or uh, even last year, you know, just make it. We always kind of relied on someone else to make the play most times. Yeah. Um, in this case, we all want to make the play. So we're all hunting to the football. So all 11 hats to the ball. And that energy is definitely, the energy is definitely another thing as well. Um, that, that's we're not a uh, a matter of understanding. That's, oh, it's, that's it's, passion, it's, it's, right? Passion. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a little bit of both. You know, yeah. um, we have it to the point now where we're playing fast. Okay. We kind of have we're more, we're more confident in the calls. You know, like I said, we know why we, we call certain calls. So if you have a certain technique you must be playing, you know, if you're good in the run, this place call for you. Go ahead right. and go make a play. So uh, everybody has a trace, and the thing is, is defense all can run. We can run, and we're pretty big, up, pretty big as well. So um, all guys who can run and young. The sky's the limit for these kids. You got a position for this guy? Ah, man. Uh, <laughs> I wish I had the legs of that person. <laughs> if I had the legs of that, man, I would just be running for my life. <laughs> but no, nah, man, I definitely... Now he's got a pretty good gig right now. Definitely does. Yeah. Definitely does. Definitely. Man, I wish I was on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time. No problem. Appreciate Thank you, man. John, LJ, man, good to meet you. Thank you, nice to meet you. Com, man. Just a few questions for you. Now, I noticed that you were the number seven this year. What's, you were 58 the past couple right. years. Uh, why the change? Uh, I wore this number in high school, uh, my junior and senior year. Um, my junior year, I changed to it. Um, seven is the number my father had seen me last play, and my father passed away in my junior year high school. Uh, but that's definitely, I wanted to get back to that. You know, he had seen that, and now I'm doing all this now to, to be at the college level. I never thought I would be uh, coming up. But now I'm here, and then he's watching down to me. I definitely want to just show for him. So all the uh, Publications have had you as number one on defense, man, the, the best returning player. How do you take that in, in, in stride and, and keep working for it? Ah, uh, man, I just, I mean, I'm happy that they did that for me. I'm definitely honored and uh, humbled and blessed to be at, that, uh, to be known as that. Um, However, still working as if I was the underdog. I mean, I'm the last guy. I definitely want to make sure that all my teammates do the same thing I'm doing is working every single day to make sure that they become the best player because we all want to be that guy, you know. Um, so uh, even though the media has put me as out there to the team, we're all on an equal level playing field. We all know that we're, we're trying to accomplish one goal as a defense. So last year the defense didn't quite have the year everybody expected to have. Uh, the, the guys, are the guys taking it personal this year that you know they, they kind of let, them, let themselves down? Very, very. Uh, even in practice, you know, even in practice, the offense is going to be the team that's supposed to dominate the entire practice. So when you go into that, it's like in the game if they already count us out. You know, even first first game, for example, they already counted us out. So we take that as a chip on our shoulder. We don't never back down from any challenge. You know, we never get intimidated, like I said. So we're definitely going to take this challenge and we're going to overcome. It. One of the main things I've heard about Brian Van Gord is intensity. Could you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, man, he's very intense. He's perfectionist. Uh, the thing is, that's what I like about him. You know, even if you do something good, I still want to know what I did wrong, what I can do better, and that's what he does to everybody. Even though you can make a good play, it's a consistent part about it. So, and the thing is, you, beat, you might beat somebody. The next person, they're gonna, they have to adjust too. So, some of the fact that you have to steady, make your game grow to the point where they can never stop you. Talk about the transition from being a linebacker to now playing on the line with your hand in the game. Well, I, I played uh, a lot of it you know, all the time, and even most of the defense, I stood up sometimes. I had my hand in the dirt sometimes. So I go down to three technique, rush the pass, and stuff like that. So that stuff never really changes. The only thing is just uh, getting different lingos, you know, making sure that the play, I know certain plays, you know, my technique on certain stuff. Oh, yes, most definitely. Uh, we, like I said, it's no secret how we did. So uh, we definitely took that on our shoulder. We went into the film and evaluated ourselves. And honestly, I had to be real with ourselves, understand that this wasn't us. And, you know, to, uh, in order to, to change that perspective, we have to go out and prove it. So every single day that we, we're working, we're just making sure that we have that mentality our back in the head of what it was last year. We didn't want to get to that point. A lot of people cut and cut their services to you know, more aggressive enough pressuring the quarterback. Does that excite you about the UG's defense? Uh, yes, most definitely. Um, he puts the situations to make plays, everybody. And then, we, like I said, when your numbers call, you just have to be ready for it. Uh, he's going to call a lot of stuff. He's switching up a lot, you know, just to make sure you keep him guessing, you know, to, uh, keep people on their toes. And we're going to control it. We're definitely
definitely going to control the district. A lot of your teammates today have said you can't overhype Alabama. You mm -hmm. have the number one team, but if you think that they're on TR, yeah. you're going to get nervous. How important right. is it believing that you guys are equal? To right. Uh, like I've told everyone else, they put their stuff on the same way we do. That's how I took that mentality ever since I was a little boy. My father instilled that in me. Um, I just know that I mean, if they're going to step on that white, between their white lines, just like we do, we got to play football. It doesn't matter who we're playing. Any time, any day, we're going to be there ready. No problem. Jonathan Grenard, how you doing? How you doing? Nice to meet you. Hey, listen, can I ask you a couple questions, sir? Cool. Okay. You play defense. Here's what's interesting. A couple of years ago, Lamar Jackson made his first start against Auburn. Right. Now, you're getting ready to, to play against Alabama. Both of those teams start with A. <laughs> start the season. Uh, you guys had a pretty successful year the year afterwards. He was a, uh, a Heisman Trophy. Do you see kind of a parallel here? Success with this team now, too? Look, uh, if we can have that success like that, anytime like, like Lamar had it, I'm all for it. Uh, Lamar is a great player. He definitely did some great things for our team, you know. Uh, we got some guys that can make some good plays just like he did, and uh, definitely lead us to, to a lot of W's this year. Now, I read somewhere that um, an NFL player said he drew a comparison between offensive and defensive players. Mm -hmm. He said that offensive players, like linemen, have to be rule obeyers. Mm -hmm. Defensive players have to be rule breakers. Yes. To a point, is that kind of true? It's kind of true. Um, everyone has their assignment. And at the end of the day, it's all about who wins their assignment. You know, most people, they can know. It's, it's one thing to do your job. You just have to say it's one thing to, to do your job, and it's another thing to actually win. So uh, each time you play, you can't just go in there, you know, trying to make a stalemate. You have to go in there with a, to, to, with a mindset to win. Okay. One question. Favorite player in the NFL growing up? Oh man, I was definitely a Michael Vick fan growing up. I mean, I was, I mean, I was born in Atlanta, you know, uh, raised Atlanta, raised an Atlanta Falcons fan. So seeing him, that just made me want to play in the NFL, and I didn't even play quarterback. <laughs> okay. Another question. Between these two questions, which one comes to mind first? Do you remember the very first? High school game you played in, or do you remember the name of your first pet? Dog pet. Oh man, uh, the first high school game I played in, it was probably my sophomore year, and I was on uh, my first varsity start, and I was about 165. And my defensive line coach can attest to this. I was like 165, couldn't even barely bench 135, and I'm on a varsity big level. Uh, <laughs> I look back at it now. I I feel like I did terrible, but now uh, I mean I got the job done. We almost we almost won. I end up we end up losing by uh, an overtime actually, but um, that was my first start, man. And it, it's crazy. And the guys back at home they'll laugh and they'll see how it was back then because I was just so small playing defensive end. My first year ever playing the D line um, had no idea about blocking schemes and stuff like that. So that was an experience. That was definitely an experience. Fun one. The loss the game was tough tough memory, but hey, it happens. Now do you remember the name of your first pick? Oh, I definitely do. My first pet, uh, his name was X-Man. X-Man, he was a German Shepherd. I had a German Shepherd named X-Man. Uh, I was in the fourth, fourth or fifth grade. Fourth or fifth grade. Wow. It's my first pet. I just actually just popped into me. Do you have a favorite food that you like to eat? You know, every football ah. player, football players love to eat, let's face it. Listen here. Is it chicken wings? Uh, right meatball? there, stop right there. Okay. Chicken wings. If you want to find a way to my heart, chicken wings. And the flavors, so lemon pepper, hot lemon pepper, mild, hey, you name it, I'm going to eat it. I love chicken wings. I love chicken in general. They say that, that uh, guys that actually compete in these eating contests have to condition their bodies yeah. like that. Do you think you could do something like that? If, you uh, if I had to, I probably could, but uh, I try to watch how much I eat in my, uh, how much I eat on my diet because I don't want to get too, too full and then get, uh, gain too much weight and I'll be feeling all slugs the next day. So I try to, uh, try to minimize my portions of food. Now, obviously, playing on in college football is such a huge rush. Right. But do you still have very fond memories of playing on Friday nights? Oh, man, I do. I remember every, almost every game just about uh, when my brothers back home. Man, that, that, that was a, a time I would never be able to forget. You know, those are memories you last. You'll remember those even when you're older. And now I'm done playing football. So I'll always remember those moments, and I'll, I'll cherish them. I would, this is always a question I like, like to end on. Let's say, for instance, they decide to make a movie about you and your life. Right. Who would you like to play that part? Ah, uh, Barack. <laughs> Barack Obama. <laughs> You're going to shoot big, aren't you? <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Okay. It's not going to be on Lifetime, but it'll probably be. Denzel's over the hill. Denzel's going to do too much. Barack Obama's laid back, cool. I feel like he figured me out. <laughs> Thank you very much, no sir. No problem. Appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
Tommy. John, nice to meet you. You know, you talked a little bit about those, those high school days. Yeah. What, what got you the biggest leap from being that player then right. to the player that you are now? Well, um, I really didn't really start in high school. Uh, even in my senior year, I came in off the bench a little bit at defensive end. I started on offense. I played tight end and receiver. And uh, basically, I just play both ways, you know, helping the team win, you know, making down blocks and tight end, you know, running for routes, you know, on defense, rushing the pass, or, you know, going inside the rush. I've always been a guy who played multiple positions. Um, but those memories of high school, I mean, it got me to the point now where uh, I can learn most positions now at the collegiate level. So now I play, in, like I said, I play inside three technique uh, from pretty much all throughout the defensive line. I can play a little bit of linebacker and stuff like that. So all that stuff definitely helped me to be able to uh, learn and mature as a football player and as a man. Since you first stepped on this campus, man, what, what can you say about your experience here at Blue? It's been, how the city has embraced It's been a great one. Uh, this city definitely loves their football. I mean, like I said, they don't have professional teams because we are the professional team. So we're going to be treated as, as a top dog. So um, the city's been nothing but love. Uh, the school has been great. You know, we, we, we love on sa on Saturday nights or Saturday mornings. We love when the car in March happens. You know, see the fans that still supporting us even win or loss. So uh, they're definitely, you can't ask for a better system. Now, I know that everybody's talking about Alabama. Mm -hmm. But there's another game that in, in Kentucky that matters. Uh, and, and, and you know which one it is. Uh, what, what can you say about that approach? Uh, that honestly, I mean, with that, that game, you never know. It's a robbery game. So uh, we, we're definitely going to mindset to win. However, I mean, you've seen the, you've seen the results. So uh, we, we're going to get to them whenever they, whenever it's daytime. But, you know, they only get too much of our time. And we don't really have to spend that much on them. But, listen, we, um, when that time comes, we'll be ready for them. What are some of the personal goals you set for yourself? I definitely want to – honestly, my personal personal goals, it sounds crazy. I just want to be the best person I can be, you know, and, and then it goes from different aspects of life, whether it's in football or off the field. You know, I just want to be the best person. I want to be known for something. I want to be remembered for something, not just off of football, but even in the community. Uh, that's why I, like, I love to do community service. Uh, I want to be the best best role model I could possibly be for younger ones that are coming up in my, uh, who didn't get the opportunity I had had, but still could get that that opportunity, not even if it's not in football, but just in life to be successful. Um, I pride myself on to make sure that everyone knows that but what I do around the community is known, known and positive. And uh, before I leave here, they want to know who I am. How different is it when you don't have Hearns and Young and those guys taking some pressure and, and you, you have some more freedom to make plays? And now you know you're going right. to right. be the focus. Right. Um, I'm ready for any challenge, you know. Most times, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty well aware how they're gonna, you know, slide with that, whatever they want to do to certain things. I mean, just and you can't let that phase you because you're gonna get that at every aspect of level you play. So uh, all you gotta do is just adjust and adapt, you know, and make your own plays and do what do what you were doing to uh, get you known. So don't switch it up. So how much confidence you take in the demonstrated performance, the mm -hmm. plays you have made? We made plenty of big plays. Here. Yeah, uh, I mean, I definitely. My mindset is I just want to continue to make plays. I feel like my, most of my mindset, I want to make every play. I there, you know, uh, that can hurt you at sometimes, but that's just the mentality I've grown up on. And um, if we won first, you last. That's the mentality I came with as well. So uh, Ricky Bobby definitely had instilled in me on that one. But, Johnson, go ahead, you good? Go ahead. You you were kind of the under the radar guy last yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, what's it like being the, the guy that everybody focuses on? Ah uh, man, like I said, I was talking to him. Um, even coming up, I wasn't that the, the top dude. I mean, little league I was, but you know, when I got to high school, you know, I came off the bench. You know, I, I was. I did my, I played my role, and uh, just whatever situation I got, I just ran with it. You know, I made the best of it. So now that I'm uh, fortunate enough to be in this position, it just me, it's, it's a great feeling. Do you dream about sacking Tua? Ah oh, man, I, I dream about sacking a lot of quarterbacks. I mean, it's just one of those. It, before every opponent I play, I, I imagine sacking them. So uh, not just Tua or Jalen or anybody like that. I mean, just anybody. If I get a chance to sack them, the opportunity come, I'm gonna take it. What is describe that feeling?